Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overall Series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode, I think I'm going to start off with trying to get this final little probe on the stack of probes that we sent to Mars to Deimos. So instead of trying to get to Phobos, which would entail uh, two burns basically, uh, one to lower our apoapsis down to here, and then finally to get into orbit around Phobos we would essentially be raising our periapsis up to there. We've already got our apoapsis uh, touching Deimos, so what I'm going to do is do a burn at apoapsis in order to lift our orbit up using this portion and then some of the fuel from the probe itself. And after that, it'll be easier to get into orbit around Deimos. If we take a look at Deimos and zoom in, once we've done this uh, 684 meter per second burn getting into orbit, will be, uh, well, it won't cost very much. Uh, it will cost uh, about 29, it looks like. And then we can land pretty easily. Uh, if it'll let me do another one, it'll just take, well, let's say we come straight down like that. We're talking about just four meters per second after that. So that will be fairly easy if we can do this burn. And I think we have enough. We've got 173 here, and so in 18 minutes we will do this. You can see it's a combination of the of the prograde burn and also the inclination correction because we're also correcting our inclination with respect to Phobos right now. Might as well. I mean, there's no harm uh, doing it uh, when we encounter it, but it was easier to make the encounter if we flattened our orbit. After this, of course, we have a launch to take care of. We have the Nico 621, which is just waiting on the launch pad right now. So it's just sitting there. We will be ready to go. And then after that, uh, well, we'll see whether the construction of our launch pad, how long that's going to take, and whether that will be completed prior to the, the next probe coming into Mars. We will have our large rocket, the Nico 944, already complete. So as long as the launch pad is ready, we can do that. Okay, and ignition. And so this will remain in orbit around Mars, providing communication support, so that's going to be fine. And that looks like the right thing, so throw down set. And I'll take nine minutes, I forgot about that. Uh, let's unlock, oh shoot. Uh, oh, okay, off, 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 no, that's using fuel that I didn't want to use. We do not have a lot of spare fuel, as you can see. Oh, it didn't actually stage properly. Great. It did a fake staging. I might as well just press a few times, because... There's no other staging event that's going to cause a problem, and we actually want everything to be done. Probably we're going to have trouble getting the encounter the way I wanted it to be. Okay. Once we uh, turn towards the node, I'll tell it to point at the node. Try and make sure it uses a minimal amount of RCS to get there. It should just stop us. I'll put fine controls on. Or, okay, it was already on. Okay, and burn. I mean, maybe the fact that the instruments are somewhat unbalanced. I thought I tried to balance them really well but maybe not well enough. Let me activate all the antennae. Let me see how to replot this because I'm, I'm sure, yeah, I mean obviously we don't have a thing going on here. Um, oh darn. Seems like we're far enough off that it's going to give me trouble. 
Okay, well, uh, we'll have to do these two burns. That's uh, 6.7 meters per second, and then another one probably about 13, 14 meters per second. 13.4. All right. Let's hope these work a little bit better than the other ones. Thankfully, this has solar panels, and so it's not going to be completely out of power or anything. Okay. Now, let me try and manually, gently turn it to the node instead of using Smart ASS. And maybe RCS is the best way to go with this. Okay. Um, looks like the planned second burn will get us our encounter, so let's proceed. We've lost connection. We have, we should have three antennae out. Yeah. Um, we shouldn't be so far away that we would lose connection. This is the actual connection to Earth, but it looks like Mars itself is blocking us from communicating with that. No excuse for this little guy though. Maybe it's just range for that guy, but this is not that far apart. I mean, three communitrons are normally good enough to communicate from Earth to the Moon. So this should not be a distance that keeps them from communicating. Anyway, we'll have to just see what happens when we get out of the shadow of Mars. Could we delay this particular burn? Well, if we delay by one orbit, it's no good. Let's try and put it over here then. Uh, maneuver. Extend out. Can we still get a encounter? Well, from here it's not not so easy. If we wait more than 21 minutes, it's not an automatic encounter sort of situation. We'll have to do some sort of radio burn to do it. Okay, now we have a connection. Now, technically, even without a connection, I could have used the RCS. Uh, yeah, I, I could have done the burn anyway, even without a connection, but I'm trying to be good, I guess. Alright, we have an encounter with Deimos. As far as... Landing on it, uh, we have uh, maybe just barely enough fuel. Try to get as close as possible. Six kilometers seems close enough. Okay, proceeding. 40 meters per second. I sure hope we'll have communication when we get there. Oh man. Looks looks like it might be okay. It's getting stretched a little bit thin here. Okay, they must serve influence. Well, we're gonna try and land, so we'll wait until we land before we do any of the science. Let's try and make orbit. I'll wait till it automatically rotates close to the retrograde marker before doing anything. Actually, we could probably get closer to the periapsis there. I don't think Deimos has much of an Oberth effect, but might as well make use of what we can. Oh, uh, we gotta watch for our line of sight with our communications so maybe we'll start the burn over here I don't want to come straight down on this side because we don't have communication like that okay that will have to do that'll leave us with 9.5 meters per second not including whatever we use for RCS well we've captured uh... but we don't have a lot, a lot of fuel. Uh, 
and it's also not showing us our apoapsis. Uh, we basically have no fuel left. I should have probably just gone for a crash course, shouldn't I have? Well, that's, that's it. That's the end of our fuel. Got a little spike on Deimos. Alright, well, I guess while we have connection, let's uh, tell it to do the data stuff. I'm sure we've done all of it or something, but I don't think I did analyze telemetry last time. Bit of a disappointment, just really hard to get it quite right. Need a lot of RCS margin. We were on fine controls until just recently. Well, now we have no connection. I'll wait until we have a connection before doing anything. I guess we can dump the stuff that isn't worth anything. We've done that. We can get another 10 for the biological sample. The other one was done in Mars orbit rather than Deimos orbit, so this is the first time we'll be transmitting this actually. Alright, well something just happened. I came to the tracking station or the time warp uh, because it was too slow time warping at Deimos waiting for a connection to transmit the science but our probe around Deimos has disappeared let me check debris there's, there's no probe there's no debris I've got debris selected it, it was here, it was here it was showing a probe in orbit around Amos, but then when I started time warping, it disappeared. I guess it crashed. I didn't get any message about it crashing. And there's no debris. So maybe we lift a little break at Deimos after all, but it yielded us nothing because we couldn't transmit the science. We had gotten some science, but we were just waiting to transmit it, but no such luck. Well, uh, I think hopefully we will have better luck with our other Uber Prober, which is still on its way. Where is it? Not that one. This one will encounter in 145 days. Well, very disappointing. I thought we could really get that probe landed on Deimos, but turns out we were short of fuel. Taking a look at our upgrades, the launch pad still has 133 days left. And uh, we have 143 days until the next Uber Prober arrives at Mars. So we will have the launch pad done before that. So let's uh, test out the uh, Nico 621. And then we'll aim to test the larger variant, the Nico 944. Um, so have the sun up, but we'll try and line up with the moon again. Okay, it has a surplus of Delta V because we're actually carrying the same fuel depot that uh, Nico 411 was carrying. We didn't actually size it up for this rocket. But yeah, this was meant to test another possibility to solve the problem with the second stage, you know, bending. Throws up and ignition. Okay, launch. Okay, six NK-15 engines are lit and good. As far as test flight is concerned, we only have 647 data units on the NK-15V. That's pretty dangerous, huh? NK-15, though, we have 6,300. Meantime before failure on these engines, 64 minutes. On the NK-15V, it's only 29 minutes. So, better watch out for that. We really need more on the NK-15V. Uh, uh, for the NK-19, it's only 640 uh, data units, but it's 60, uh, 76 minutes meantime before failure. Now the NK-19 is just the upgraded NK-9V. 
But apparently it restarted us on the data units. Alright, getting ready for first stage set. Set. And ignition. Alright, uh, worried me for a sec there, but the two NK-15Vs are working. Not the greatest sound from them. The units are being collected. Yeah, pretty ugly sound, I have to say. Don't know what's up with that. Alright, fairing set. Bearings are off. Let's make sure to get the antennae out this time. I forget if I action group them. Okay, looks like the fuel depot antennae are out. These engines are still burning fine. Okay, set. And ignition. So the second stage was fine, and we are on the third stage with the NK-19. So this stage will have some extra left over. But there's no particular point in trying to boost it to a higher orbit, unfortunately. We'll also try and dispose of it, so we'll cut it short of actual orbit, and then we'll use the payload's fuel in order to make orbit. I think it should be fine. Well, we'll extend panels when we're done with the burn. Okay, here we go. And shut down. I wanted uh, app lapses to be a little bit higher just to help with rendezvous. But you can see we have a thousand. Oh, I was supposed to shut this down before we made orbit. Shoot. Space junk again. I don't suppose we have RCS thrusters on this, do we? No. No, we don't. And it can't restart. I was thinking about something else. Oh well. Uh, so yeah, let's just dump that. But we've got an extra bit of space junk. We need to unlock this fuel. Let's just get into a slightly different orbit so that we don't encounter that. Okay, well uh, that was successful. Completely successful test. No premature shutdowns of any engines, no loss of thrust, nothing like that. So, well, maybe we can go on to the big one, the Nico 944. Let's take a look at that. Just in case you're wondering, the next Earth to Mars window is in 574 days, so we have plenty of time to plan for that. We've got a lot of science. Maybe I should get some upgrade points by checking out the R&D building. I suppose, I mean, with our engines right now being what they are, most of our work, I mean, we could get the J2 here, but that's 150 signs just for the J2, and then it takes a lot to unlock it, 100,000, and then they cost 2,200 a pop, uh, which is a lot. So, yeah, not very appetizing until we get, I mean, the M1 is very nice, but that's a ways away yet, and we'd have to, I don't, I don't think we have to unlock the R&D building for that, but I yeah we don't have quite enough science to unlock this and then the M1 and the M1 is would be overdoing it and it'd be really expensive too. Wow, twenty-two thousand each. Jeez, I mean, so the the engines that we're using right now are these. They're eight hundred eighty each, and these are this is the RD two seventy which uses pentaborine. And, uh, or, uh, no, this is the one that uses pentaborine. This is UDMH and N204. Well, the pentaborine one doesn't cost that much more, even though it's much, much better. Huh. Go figure. So, anyway, we will we'll unlock stuff from the, uh, down here, because I don't feel a pressing need for those engines. Uh, this is completely useless, isn't it? Uh, advanced heat management. Apparently, radiators are supposed to go here, but they aren't. Colonization. Advanced colonization is over here. Oh, so it sort of doubles back. It goes on from here. What? Uh, I don't even understand. Oh, uh, yeah, it doubles back through this arrow to here for recycling. Even though recycling only costs 90. Storage technology we don't have anything in. 
So apparently if we're going to go for colonization, it's all the way out there and it'll cost 2250 Long short Long term habitation, hydroponics, but we have no actual parts here. We have some parts here, but we'll need short term habitation first. Okay, uh, I guess we'll have to unlock landing to get space exploration and advanced exploration, which seem to be important. Kerbal safety bubble, but not RP0. Oh, it looks like landing requires miniaturization, so we have to research this first. We are researching second gen capsules, and only then can we un unlock landing. We have 310 left. Now we can't get landing and space exploration. We don't have enough. We could just get high power electrics. Not much going on there though. I think we should just get landing. And how about short term habitation as well? Alright, I think that's where we'll leave it. Oh, alright, basic solids. Basic solids. And mature solids, even though they all are unlikely to be of any use for us. Um, sure, just for the upgrade point. Okay, so now we have some upgrade points. And what I would like to do is speed up speed up uh, the construction sp the construction speed itself is not that bad but when we upgrade buildings it takes forever anyway let's take a look at where we're at let's increase the build points just a little bit uh, a little bit more science per day and I'm gonna use some more funds to buy a few more points Okay, well, I'm going to time warp until the launch pad is done, and then we're going to launch the Nico 944. Okay, well, here it is, our huge Nico 944, and it sort of bounced on the launch clamps a little bit. I forgot that we have this rigged for recovery. We'll see how that works out. Um, I have no idea, but it's uh, barely got enough Delta V to get this uh, payload to orbit. It's got a lot of engines that can fail. The first stage engines seem to be alright as far as data units are concerned. I guess our main worry will be the second stage NK-15Vs. Alright, so on that note, let us line up with the moon. Uh, we should uh, get the pumps working. Because the liquid oxygen is boiling off. Okay, here we go. We'll see if stage recovery can recover the first stage. With all the floats on it too. All right, ignition. And launch. So possibly need more than four launch clamps. So about 1,200 tons on launch. Uh, the low thrust weight ratio of this stage is not making me all that happy. That'd be a smooth ride for any astronauts or turbinauts. But yeah, definitely not making me happy. Okay, set. And ignition. Uh, yeah, the ignition thing did not happen the way I wanted it to. But it looks like we might be safe. All right, second stage has ignited. First stage is going to, well, it's in the hands of stage recovery now. We have yet to recover, I, I don't remember if we've recovered a stage in this save yet. Stage recovery has just been hanging out so far, giving us messages about what we've lost. I'm just gonna keep it to 45 degrees. Doesn't have that much TWR to work with. Oh, we've got a message. The first stage was recovered. Stage value is 16,718. Refund 16,348. Terminal velocity 5.69. And since the parachutes were at the bottom, it should have ended up with the engines on top and the floats on the bottom, keeping it just like that. 
in theory. So, cool beans. Really, you can't tell our situation until we let go of the fairings by waiting until 100 kilometers. Alright, fairing set. Ooh. Um, we have barely enough for orbit if we play our cards right. Uh, how much TWR does the upper stage have? Oh, not much. Shoot. Alright, set. Ignition. Well, uh, that stage worked out for us. But our ability to get to orbit is pretty tight. On the bright side, we still have the engine on the payload. But that can't do very much. It's not got a very high thrust to weight ratio. We're talking about a 50 ton payload with just that asterisk engine. Yeah, this, uh, this rocket is a bit tight. I don't think it can really do 50 tons. Yep, I would say estimates of the capacity of this launch system were overly optimistic. And when you think about it, 1,200 tons on the launch pad, trying to get 50 tons means we were trying to get more than 4% of, uh, of its total mass as payload to orbit. Which, for a Keralox system, and this was kerosene and oxygen all the way, is pushing it. I mean, normally, kerosene oxygen systems, even really good ones like this, you're talking about 3.5%, not more than 4%. So I'm going to toss it a little bit higher up, give it a lot of time to apolapsis in the hope that this can actually make orbit then. But it's a tough one. We need about 600 meters per second. All right, separation and ignition. Ah, oh boy, I have to unlock this. Okay, can we ignite this time? It might not want to ignite because I failed to do it properly. Yeah, it still says no propellants. Okay, I'm gonna have to go back to Space Center and come back to it. Okay, now it looks like we have throttle. We will want to increase our pitch quite a lot. Uh, our stage time is an hour and 38 minutes, but that's for 6,000 meters per second. Said we were less than 0.1 Gs, we're 0.04 Gs. We're not exactly accelerating very fast. Or at all. Well, physical time warp. I don't know if this, well, I don't think this is going to survive. Well, we are now going down. Still have, let's say, 500 meters per second to burn in order to make orbit. Okay, it's looking increasingly like we actually might make this, despite the odds, this plucky little fuel tank. Uh, but we're at 180 kilometers, still increasing to the downward side. Need 150 meters per second. But uh, we're gonna end up sort of lopsided. Let me pitch up. Uh, While well, we're going back into the atmosphere, maybe I spoke too soon. We're close, but we're still descending. Uh, I'll pitch up straight. We really need to stop descending soon. Like right now. Oh, nuts. Well... It was a valiant effort, but it didn't quite work out. Maybe we should have uh, pitched up more earlier in retrospect and we might have made it but there you are I think for safety's sake we'll say that the Nico 944 can manage 40 tons for a while I think it can do that and uh, we'll go with that 
But on this note, I guess um, this has been sort of a fail episode. Uh, we will try and regroup and get something better next time when we bring our second set of Mars probes in with the Uber Prober launch. And, and I'll probably have something ready with the second gen capsules unlocked uh, for our subsequent moon missions. Alright, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.